In this tutorial, I want to talk about electric fields. Um, we'll start with the basics. Uh, let's take a, a positive charge and a negative charge. Now, charge has um, got a symbol Q and is measured in coulombs. Now, those charges will be surrounded by an electric field. And um, to represent that, for a positive charge, the electric field always moves out radially from the positive charge. And for a negative charge, the electric field is going to move in towards that negative charge. Now, the electric field is kind of like an invisible force field. Um, you might argue that it doesn't actually exist, but um, the point is, if you were to put a charge uh, near one of these, these charges, then that charge will experience a force as a result of the field. A um, couple of important ideas here that you've got to be aware of. Um, number one, the closer the field lines are together, the stronger the electric field strength. So the, the field will be stronger here at this point than it will be here because the field lines are closer together, <coughs> closer to the charge. Um, if we put two charges together, then they behave uh, very similar to um, the way that a north and south pole will behave with two magnets. Um, so unlike charges uh, will attract, electric field lines will move out from the positive charge and in towards the negative charge. So you're going to get a situation that looks a little bit like this. Um, if we took two positive charges, then like charges repel. So with two positive charges, the electric field lines would look like this. Okay, so all the field lines are moving out from the positive charges, and uh, these charges will repel. Now in uh, level 2 NCA physics, you're normally going to be dealing with uh, uniform electric fields. Um, these are not examples of that because the field lines um, are closer together in some places than others, so the field is not uniform. So a uniform electric field would look something like this. If we take um, two plates, and we take those metal plates and we hook them up to a supply and uh, this is the positive end of the supply that's the negative side then what's going to happen is is that um, this plate the top plate is going to become positively charged and the bottom plate is going to become negatively charged as a result of this, we are going to get electric field lines um, occur or, or, um, between the plates. And electric field lines are always drawn from positive to negative. Now because this is a uniform electric field between these two plates, that means that these um, electric field lines need to be parallel and they need to be the same distance apart. Okay, the fact that they are the same distance apart tells us that it is a uniform electric field. Um, sometimes we draw them curved at the ends, but that's not too important. <clears throat> okay, so there's an, an example of a uniform electric field. As a basic achieved question, you're probably going to be asked to, to draw on the field lines from positive to negative and uh, be really sure that you keep them the same distance apart um, so that you can tell that uh, it is a uniform field. Now there are a couple of equations that you're going to have to be familiar with and use um, and uh, they're both given to you in your formula sheet. The first equation is um, to how you would calculate electric field and electric field is equal to the voltage divided by the distance and that distance there is the distance between um, the two plates. This formula only really works for a uniform electric field. Now of course uh, voltage has the units of volts 
and distance between the plates has the units of meters, which means that the units of electric field strength must be volts per meter. So you don't have to memorize units, you can just work them out from the formula. It's voltage divided by meters, uh, so volts per meter for electric field. The, uh, the second formula that you're going to have to be familiar with and use <coughs> is this one here, where force is equal to E times Q. So what that equation is saying is that if you um, put a charge somewhere between those two plates, over here, then that charge will experience a force and uh, it will therefore accelerate in, uh, towards the positive plate if it's an electron or towards the negative plate if it is a positive charge. Um, so force uh, has units of newtons and um, charge has units of coulombs. And electric field, well, <clears throat> we could write it as volts per meter, but if we look at it in terms of uh, force and charge, electric field would be equal to force divided by charge therefore the units are going to be uh, newtons per coulomb okay so force divided by charge newtons divided by coulombs um, at a very basic level they're going to ask you to work out say the electric field strength and um, that's quite straightforward let's imagine that they give you um, a value for the supply is 200 volts <clears throat> and they tell you that the distance between the plates is um, 4 millimetres. Now remember in your calculator you can't uh, put the 4 in as 4 millimetres, you're going to have to convert that to metres, so it's 4 times 10 to the negative 3 metres. So to work out electric field strength, we're just going to apply that, that top formula there. Um, the electric field strength will be equal to the voltage divided by the distance. We've got 200 volts and the distance is 4 times 10 to the negative 3, okay, 4 millimeters, and uh, 200 divided by 4 millimeters gives us 50,000 50, volts per meter. Okay, just check that again. Yes, 50,000 volts per meter. <clears throat> um, they could then go and ask you to work out the, um, the force that that, um, that charge will experience as a result of the field. Um, let's imagine that we put an uh, electron in this field. Um, so here's my electron. And we want to determine the force on that electron in that field. Well, the way you do this is you'd use a second formula. Uh, force is equal to E times Q. Electric field we know is um, 50,000 volts per meter. And the charge is the charge on uh, one electron. Now, that'll be given to you, but um, what it is is 1.6, or negative for electron, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs is the charge of one electron. So we multiply it by that number. 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. So back to our calculator. If we go ahead and multiply the last answer, so 50,000 times 1.6 times 10 to the power of negative 19, we're going to get our, our force there, which is very, very tiny. Um, 8 times 10 to the negative 15 newtons. <clears throat> Now, um, one of the questions I might ask you is um, to um, describe um, what the force would be on the electron in different places in the field. So let's imagine we put it here, or we put it there, or even down here. It's kind of a trick question in a way. Uh, the answer is that the force is the same on that charge anywhere in the field. And the reason is that this is here is a uniform electric field. Now we can confirm that with, um, with the formulas. If we have a look at it, the force is equal to E times Q. Um, the Q is fixed, okay, that's the charge on the on the electron. Um, the electric field, well, to determine whether that's fixed, we know that E is equal to V over D, and uh, both the voltage 
is uh, fixed and the distance is fixed. So if both the, the charge, the voltage and the distance are maintained the same, then the, the force will be the same on that charge anywhere in the field. Um, so again, like I said, kind of a trick question. Um, being a uniform field, the force anywhere in that field is the same. Now they're also going to ask you other questions to do with um, you know, what would happen if we were to reduce the distance between the plates, for example. So we've got the situation here where we have an electric field. And the question wants to know uh, what will happen to the force um, on the electron if we were to reduce the distance between the plates. Okay, so we're going to go from this situation to a situation where the gap is now reduced. Okay, the easiest way to tackle a problem like this is to use the formulas. Okay, the formulas are your best friend. They're given to you the exam, um, so you may as well use them. Okay, so the question is, what happens to the force okay, on an electron between the two plates when the distance is reduced? Okay, so we've got two formulas at our disposal. We know that um, force is equal to E times Q, and we know that electric field is voltage divided by distance. All right, let's start with this one here. If we were to reduce the um, the size of the, the voltage, uh, sorry, the distance, okay, so distance goes down. What is going to happen to the value of electric field? Well, if you reduce the distance and the voltage remains fixed, and when you're describing this in your exam, you need to make sure you say that, okay, so if distance is reduced and the voltage stays the same, then that's going to result in an increase in electric field. Uh, if you're not convinced, then just get your calculator out and, and make the distance smaller and see what happens. The electric field will reduce because electric field is inversely proportional to the distance between the plates. Then we come to this formula. If the electric field was to increase as a result of a reduction in distance, then what happens to the force? Well, if E increases and the charge remains the same, okay, so we're just stuck with this one electron that stays the same, the charge is fixed, then that's going to result in a, an increase in the force between um, or on the electron. So that answers our question. If the distance is, is uh, reduced, the force on the electron will be greater. Um, they might also ask you a question to do with uh, the voltage. Um, what would happen if we were to keep the voltage the same, uh, sorry, the distance the same, and change the voltage. Okay, so we're going from a situation where say we have a 200 volt supply and uh, let's say we reduce that to 100 volts. What is going to happen to the, the force experienced by an electron in that field? Um, of course it could also be a, a positive charge, it doesn't really matter. Um, so 200 to 100 what happens? Well again we go to our formulas. We know the force depends on electric field strength times the charge, and we know that electric field strength depends on the voltage divided by the distance. We are going to reduce the voltage. V goes down. The distance remains fixed. If we reduce the voltage and D stays the same, the electric field strength must go down because electric field is directly proportional to the voltage, given that the distance remains fixed. Then we come to our second formula. If the electric field goes down and the charge remains the same, then that's going to result in a reduction in the force. So the force on the electron will be reduced if we decrease the voltage. So you can answer quite a few questions like this in NCA. I'd recommend you, you write the formulas down, you talk about what stays the same, you talk about what's changing, and you can pretty much explain your way to excellence uh, for most questions, especially the ones here to do with electric fields. 
Um, the next thing they're going to ask you, and this is really you know top sort of question worth excellence, is to describe the energy changes occurring between um, the plates on a charge. So now we're going to take this charge um, and we're going to put it between the plates. Let's make it a positive charge this time. And we've got our positive plate and our negative plate. Now of course that's hooked up to a, a supply voltage. And um, we we'll almost make that 200 volts. And uh, the distance we'll keep back at um, at four millimeters. Okay, so four times ten to negative three. Drawing our field lines in from positive to negative, and being a uniform field, they are the same distance apart. Okay, so let's describe the energy changes taking place. Um, we're told that the charge has been moved uh, from the negative plate. Okay, to the positive plate, and then once it's it's there, it's then uh, released, and it moves towards or back towards the negative plate. So describe the energy changes taking place. Well, the key idea here is is that if we're moving the positive charge towards the positive plate, then it is working against the electric field. Okay, so if it's working against the field, then work is done. And the work done by the charge to move against the field is equal to force times the distance. Uh, we can write this another way. Because we know that force is equal to electric field times charge, that means uh, one way that you could determine the work done is by um, equating these two together. So work would be equal to the uh, electric field strength times the charge, that's our F, E times Q, uh, times the distance between the plates. <clears throat> now what's happening is, is that as work has been done to move that positive charge uh, towards the positive plate, okay, so against the electric field, that work has been transformed into um, electrical potential energy. So the work done is equal to electrical potential energy. Now that formula there for electrical potential energy, that is a formula that is given to you um, on the formula sheet. Okay, so electrical potential energy is equal to electric field strength times charge times distance. And that's the equivalent to the work done to move the charge to the positive plate. <clears throat> All right, so once that's happened, once it's um, at the top plate, the positive plate, the electric charge, the positive charge, has got electrical potential energy. If we then let that charge move uh, freely, then all of that energy is going to be uh, transformed into kinetic energy. Okay, because the positive charge is attracted to the negative uh, plate, and um, it's going to accelerate towards that negative plate and all of the electrical potential energy it had is going to be converted into uh, kinetic energy as it reaches the bottom plate. Um, and once it reaches that bottom plate, all of the, the um, electrical potential energy will be converted into kinetic energy, assuming that there are no energy losses due to, to heat and, and things like that. And the whole idea behind that is conservation of energy. Um, so if you can describe that um, in that kind of detail, that will get you up to excellence in the um, NCA Level 2 Physics, okay, describing the energy changes taking place. Uh, quick summary, so work is done to move that positive charge against the electric field. That electric field, um, that uh, sorry, work is going to be converted into electrical potential energy. If the charge is then... Um, released and free to move, the electrical potential energy will then be converted into kinetic energy uh, given that there are no losses due to, to heat and, and things like that. Um, next step is they could actually ask you to work out therefore what is the velocity, okay, so what is the velocity here of the electron when it whacks into that, uh, sorry, of the, pop, uh, the positive charge when it whacks into that negative plate. 
To do this, we, we're going to use these, these ideas of conservation of energy. We know that all of the electrical potential energy will be converted into kinetic energy. We know that the electrical potential energy is equal to E times Q times D. We also know that kinetic energy is a half times M times V squared. <clears throat> Um, to make things a little bit different, let's make this an electron. Okay, So let's imagine that we have a slightly different problem. Same scenario pretty much, except we have our electric field like this. We have our positive plate. We have our negative plate. We have an electron that's, um, that's sitting here. And that electron is accelerating towards the positive plate. Down here it's got electrical potential energy and when it reaches the, the positive plate it's got kinetic energy. And we want to work out what the velocity is when it whacks into that positive plate. Okay, so we're going to use this idea of conservation of energy. Um, we'll make the same distance as before. The distance is going to be 4 millimetres. That's between the plates. Uh, the voltage we'll make, we'll leave at 200 volts. And um, the rest of the information you need I'll, I'll bring up as we go along. Okay, so to work out V, all we're going to do is put numbers into this equation and then, and then solve for V. The electric field um, strength is not given to us, but we can work it out because the electric field strength is simply equal to the voltage divided by the distance. And uh, way back in the previous problem, I actually worked that out. So we had a voltage of 200 and we had a distance of 4 millimeters. And that worked out to be 50,000 uh, volts per meter. Okay, so we've got our E. Our E is 50,000. What else do we need? We need the charge. That'll be given to you. Um, the charge on one electron is 1.6, or negative actually, uh, times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. Distance. Distance is uh, 4 millimetres, so 4 times 10 to the negative 3. Um, what else do we need? The mass. The mass is the mass of the electron. And that will also be given to you. It is 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms. So all we're going to do is plug all those numbers into this equation here, which comes from the idea of conservation of energy. And then we can use that to work out the, uh, the unknown velocity, the velocity at which the electron will hit that positive plate. Okay, so doing this we're going to have um, 50,000 times negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 times 4 times 10 to the negative 3 and that's going to be equal to a half times 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 times v squared. Alright, at this point you want to be careful that you don't um, make any mistakes with your rearranging. You might like to put it into solver to make it easier for you. But um, doing the rearranging, uh, v squared by itself will be equal to um, 50,000 times the 1.6 times the distance between the plates. Um, I'm going to divide by a half on both sides. And I'm going to divide by the mass of the electron as well. Um, and the last step, and to make this a bit quicker, the velocity will just be equal to the square root of all of that. Okay, so putting all that to the calculator, um, we've got square root of in brackets uh, 50 thousand times 1.6 times the negative 19. The negative sign there is not too important in the front there. 
uh, times the distance between the plates, 4 times 10 to negative 3, and we um, are dividing that by a half, so 0.5, times the mass of an electron, 9.11 times 10 to the power of negative 31 kilograms. And that should give us the answer for... Uh, we actually need to just go back and add another bracket in. Otherwise we're going to run into some problems. So we'll put a bracket there and a bracket at the bottom because it is a square root of the entire thing. Alright, so we're going to get a velocity there of uh, 8381674. So the two significant figures, that's 8.4. Um, 8.4 times 10 to the power of 6 meters per second. So there's the velocity that the electron is going to hit that top plate and it comes from the idea of uh, conservation of energy where the electrical potential energy is converted into um, kinetic energy given that there are no um, energy losses due to, to heat and, and other external forces. Um, a problem like that is definitely going to be worth up to excellence level in NCEA Level 2 Physics.